It's very French. It's so French. Yes, that oh, is a somebody, French comic. The the French person art is. style is like it kind of looks half finished. Mm-hmm. It's 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 like Don Bluth, but like on acid. Um, it's weird. Uh, yeah, it's worth a look, but it's very. I, I I don't I didn't care for the art style. Didn't like the art style so much, and the. Uh, Dialogue is Still a too. little too, yeah, because it's a translation of a translation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it reads like something from um, Metal Herlant. Remember that book? No. It was a um, French French science fiction comic. It was really good. It's actually the French version of heavy metal. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, it's uh, it was really good. For you know, the art was gorgeous, but um, it just wasn't. Uh, the dialogue was always too silted. Mm. All right, we can hear every, hear everything. Yeah, we're good. <clears throat> Clearing our throats. Yeah. Setting <clears throat> our whistles. I have no cups close by. Can you hear uh, that? Yeah. Yes. You can hear that. The bang. That. No. I thought oh, I, I was like, oh my no, god! I, I thought that was. A, he said, as soon as you said that, I heard a bang. Oh, that's what this? I said. Yes. Do you hear that? I don't even know what I'm listening for. Okay, yay! Because I'm putting my cup down on something soft, and now I'm like all freaking out. Uh, yeah. Uh, I didn't mean. I didn't mean to freak you out. It was just something I noticed. I heard a a lot of uh, setting down of things. Yeah, I don't know. Me. Can you oh, see like it? it? Yeah, I see that. It's my cat. It, it's blurring it. Yeah. Yeah, it is blurring. Why? Cause it's because of the blurring background. It's only it's seeing my face. It's that Captain Marvel. It's yeah, it's that Captain Marvel cup. I'm and Captain Marvel Ms. and all all day. She's Ms. Like Marvel. Oh, Ms. Marvel. Right. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> all righty. <clears throat> get loose. So tired. <laughs> we'll get through it. We'll get through it. Hello and welcome to the Amber Spycast, your one-stop shop for all things His Dark Material. Man, it kills me. Hello and welcome to the Amber Spycast, your one-stop shop for all things His Dark Materials. Your Dark Materialists are myself, Alaric, Travis, and Joanna. Joining us on the internets here talking about a beautiful series of books. This one, man, subtle knife. Joanna, kick us off. So, in the world of Chitagaze, Lyra awakens before Will and plans to visit Mary Malone without him. As she makes her way to the window, she encounters three younger children playing in the water. They talk to her about cats, specters, the guild, and a place called the Tower of Angels, or Torre degli Angeli. She leaves the children and crosses over into Will's Oxford, making her way to the physics building to see Mary. Dr. Mary, Dr. Malone tells Lyra that some officials from Will's world are already there and asking about her. They begin questioning Lyra, and she accidentally reveals that she knows Will. Realizing her mistake, Lyra flees from the building and is picked up later by the man she met in the museum the day before, Sir Charles Latram. He takes Lyra to the window that leads to Chigaze, but before he drops her off, Sir Charles steals the alethiometer. Lyra returns to Chigaze and tells Will what happened. Together, Lyra and Will go to Sir Charles' house to confront him. He tells them that he will give back the alethiometer if they get him a knife that is being held by a man in Chigaze in the Tower of Angels. Will is shocked when he sees the head of a serpent peeking out of the sleeve of Sir Charles' linen coat, but Lyra doesn't see it. She and Will agree to retrieve the knife. They go to the Torre and see a man, Angelica's older brother Tulio, trying to use the knife. Tulio has ambushed and beaten an old man named Giacomo Paradisi and stolen the knife from him. Will and Tulio fight for the knife, and Tulio cuts off two of Will's fingers. Will wins the fight and keeps the knife, but Tulio escapes. The old man explains that a knife bearer is known by his absence of two fingers. Giacomo teaches Will both how to cut through to other worlds and how to close up the holes again. Later that night, Lyra and Will return to Will's world, planning to use the knife to steal the alethiometer. When they are at Sir Charles' house, Mrs. Coulter arrives, and Lyra realizes that Sir Charles Latram is actually Lord Boreal, 
who wants the knife so he can travel between worlds without fearing the specters. Lyra causes a diversion so Will can take the alethiometer. Mrs. Coulter's monkey demon chases them, almost catching them, but Will and Lyra escape through a window to the world of Chigaze and close it up again. This was kind of a thrill. This, uh, this, these three chapters were th- absolutely thrilling. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, it was like nonstop action. It, yeah, there it really wasn't, was. There wasn't much like sitting and listening and discussing, although there was some conversations. This was a this is like the action set piece after action set piece. I felt like I felt like it was you in those movies when they have like they always have that Italian chase scene with like the cars. Like I can sure. try to think of the movie. I'm trying to think mini of the ones. Ma- like yeah, min- the little mini cars, like all through the little, yeah. like all through the little. The seats. Italian like, job. That's how I yeah. Yes, yes. That's how I felt when I was reading this. I, just, I felt like I was I was in that kind of a of a situation. I was like, oh, oh, and like kind of going in between and trying to figure out, you know, they just squeak by and Lyra just gets out. It was really exciting. We have a, a chase scene. We have a heist. We've got a we've got basically the Italian job, except right. uh, the Chittagaze version. Right. Exactly. Marlon Brando is like totally um, Lord, Lord, I'm sorry, Lord Boreal is totally Marlon Brando. In 100%. The Italian job. Oh, yeah, that could totally work. Yeah. <clears throat> well, let's let's talk a little bit. Let's start from the top with the uh, this conversation that um, they have with the kids and they learn a learn little bit more about this world and the cats. Oh, my God. It, like, OK, so it's irrational, right? That there's no real reason why. Cats aren't evil in this world, right? I mean, no, but they say the cats have got the devil in them. Yeah. I, st- I still think there's a thing. There's got to be a thing. You think there's something up with cats? Like, really? Yeah. I mean, there's no way that they're, like, mob, like, lynch mobbing a, a cat before, you know, in the last chapter, if there's no reason at all. I think there's got to be something more than a wives' tale. I feel like this this organization, the this... Um, the guild the guild yeah i feel like they could say something to the populace and they would believe it pretty much without any proof so if they said oh the if they're trying to figure out why the specters are around and people are looking at the guild as the reason you could blame a cat right well, you know now that you say that cats might be the rats of this world you know like we all thought the rats were the reason for the black plague for thousands of years, when in fact it was the 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 lice on the back of the rats. Mm-hmm. So maybe the cats are the rats in this world. Anyone can cook, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> you just threw me off totally. Now I want Boxy to sound like Pat. Oh Mo- no! <laughs> uh. All right, so I we mean, learn. But- Go ahead. No, it's okay. no, it's okay. I was just kidding. You know, they, they say they bite you, that they puts the devil in you. Um, but they move very quickly from the cats to the specters. Mm-hmm. And then they start to talk about like the origin of the specters. And again, Travis, kind of you said how it was like wives' tale. Like there's like mm-hmm. nine different stories from how of how the specters got there and where they come from. And 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 so there's like nothing really sure in right. this world. Like, you they, know, like they don't like, know. Yeah, like it just like there's it doesn't seem to be anything that they can base fact on or, or or you know know for sure that this is what something is. Maybe it comes from being the that nexus of other worlds, and they have like all these uh, stories and stuff that are flooding in and out. Who knows? Hmm. Perhaps. So, and how long have they they've been they've been there as long as most people can remember? Mm-hmm. But like a few hundred years. Yeah. I yeah. thought they said like three hundred. Three hundred, right? I yeah, I thought, like in an I earlier the guy, chapter. Yeah, the guy on the horse told mm-hmm. uh, um, the the witch. Right. This seems like it's the kind of world that seems impossible to live in. And how do people procreate? And how do kids survive? And how do parents survive with just the these these looming specters that can come from anywhere at any time? Right. It doesn't seem like they just come out of the woods, you know. If that if they came out of the woods, then people ju- would just avoid the woods. They oh. just they come from anywhere, whenever, and children just you know it's so terrifying because you see, uh, not to jump ahead, but we see someone 
being taken by specters with the two uh, two kids again near them that can't see, but they're just sort of like swiping and trying to protect this older person, but are unable to. And how uh, terrifying would it be knowing that you're going to be vulnerable to that when you're an adult? Yeah, you're 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 years away. Yeah. And when you get closer and closer, it's got to drive you crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. uh, but they're not able to produce anything anymore. Um, you know, the guild provides for them, I guess, exclusively, which I guess could explain why Coke exists in this world. They steal it from other yeah. worlds. Yeah, no one makes Coke in this world. I hope they steal it from a world that has like the cane sugar Coke. Yeah, 100%. Oh. The Mexican Coke. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Like the That's whole the world is like Mexican Coke. Like, yeah, well, and, I'm glad you weren't saying like, like the 1800s Coke, that had like, yeah. like the a, like, like Coke. actual Coca Cola Coke. That would yeah. be a very exciting world. <laughs> that would be a very frenetic <laughs> world. <laughs> We're the specters. What? what? <laughs> anyway, so I, I got I got a question. I have a question about the guild. Yeah. I, I are they the magisterium of this world? I it's, think so. It you know what I mean? like, not quite as large or, or maybe as, as far reaching, possibly. They seem a little more splintered. They describe them as the men who know all kinds of things, philosophy, alchemy, all kinds of things that they know. And they were the ones who let the specters in. Well, at least that's one of the stories. Could be okay. just scholars or scientists. Sure. Yeah, that could be the Oxford. You know, they, they split an atom and, you know. Right. I was is, just curious. Is it because, you know, what, one of the stories was about the, the cutting of the knife, right? She, uh, for, forging the knife, they cut it so thin or, or something that they, it was beyond what was possible. And that might have led to it. Yeah, I mean, it sounded like they were splitting atoms, mm -hmm. like you said. And they got down to, like, elementary particles and they couldn't split it any further. But this world doesn't seem like a world that has that kind of technology. They do. I guess they have electricity. Yeah, but it doesn't seem there's doesn't seem any more advanced than that. There's no cars or anything, right? And that's the thing with science, right? Like you have to build on top of other discoveries. You can't. You just... don't just go straight to atom smashing, right? It's right. like, you know, um, bone tools, atom smashing. <laughs> 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 um, all right, so. Um, they get this information, and then they, uh, Lyra, I guess Will is asleep. He's resting. Mm -hmm. And Lyra decides to go ahead and head back to um, Will's, Will's world without him. Not, not the best of decisions, I guess. No. Uh, but she goes, she really wants to see Mary again, and she wants to see what's going on and maybe meet this other person. She arrives, and uh, things aren't quite uh, so great. Or what she was hoping for. No. There's some Mary. unwanted guests there. Yes, Mary is not alone. She has the 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 pale hair guy. Mm -hmm. And he's got she, a friend. And she pushes him, you know, like Lyra's in she pushes her in the bathroom to sort of warn her, right? Just mm -hmm. before. And mm -hmm. like Mary's kind of frantic. And Mary's really been swept up in this very quickly. And you mm -hmm. know, she's probably like thinking Lyra's, wow, this this kid is amazing. And then right away, she's sucked into this adventure unwittingly. Yeah, and she covers for herself pretty well. Yeah, really well. I mean, like, you know, like, she's she's like, oh, I just told them. Like, she just kind of is 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 throwing them off the scent a little bit. And she still has no idea what's going on. I love that in, in the one part, she's like, but what's going on? Like, it's in italics. Like, she's, like, yelling it. Like, I have no idea. <laughs> and Lyra's like, chill. <laughs> like, I got it. But she does. She handles herself, I think. I think really very well, but, um, but yeah, they were, they were crafty. They, they were crafty. They fooled Lyra. Yeah. And I was, I was like, don't like, I, it upset me when they got some stuff out of her. She's confident, but she's also overconfident at times. And this was certainly a, a, a moment where she's overconfident and sort of feels like she's got the, has read the room correctly. Um, but they walk her right into a trap, an easy one, really. Yeah. But one that one that any of us can fall for. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, she does. She doesn't have a baseline understanding of the world. So she, can't, how does she lie and and you know make up something that's not right when she doesn't know herself what isn't mm -hmm. right about the world? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't take long before 
she decides to um, leave <laughs> and, and make a run for it. Uh, and this is really that first significant chase scene. And one of my favorite moments from it, if you don't mind us moving into the chase scene, is the uh, the uh, revolving door. And she doesn't really know how to use a revol- revolving door. She pushes the wrong direction on it. Mm-hmm. And that's probably the kind of moment where you're like, it's the most tense because you're like, people, you know, someone's running up behind her and she's going to barely push this thing in time and she blasts out and runs just in time. Um, but she uh, she gets a, a jump on him, a little bit of a jump, uh, but she needs a little help to ultimately escape. And I guess luckily for her that she gets an assist. Luckily. <sighs> In, in in the in in the moment, it's lucky. Yeah, would you have gotten in that car? No, I, no, I, I don't know. Even uh, with the peril, I mean, she did not thing. have a good feeling about that guy. Yeah, Sir Charles. She did have a good. Uh, she didn't have a good feeling about him, but she had an awful feeling about these other people. Right. So you know. F- frying pan fire who knows which one it is right mm-hmm. i mean it was any port in the storm there really and she mm-hmm. needed she needed help and he was offering it mm-hmm. but um still it's creepy yep still still is gross yeah yep. right. <laughs> like right. they do not let up on that um mm-hmm. particularly when he lets her out of the car at the like at some point. Yes. Over him. Yes. Oh, oh my Ugh. god i was like that made me so uncomfortable um, yeah. But I, di- I digress because there's things that happen in between. Yes. But yeah, so I, I do. I mean, I, I don't. I guess. I guess I would have to get in the car if it was between the pale-haired man and the old guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess. I guess she did sort of have to select a, a lesser of two evils. Uh, but she, you know, she, he takes her to sort of near where the window is, and uh, and he lets her out of the car. Her his giant Rolls Royce. Which I picture like bigger than nor- a normal Rolls Royce. I don't know. It's so- described as so huge. I'm picturing it's like a limo. it's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so she heads back into Chittagaze, and uh, and the next time we see her, she's somewhat frantic. And why is she so frantic? He swiped the alethiometer. Uh, little crafty, our crafty little Sir Charles stole her alethiometer. Hmm. I, I don't know how he did it. That. She was care. I mean, she's she was winded and careless, and she had set the satchel on the seat. I guess. Mm. Um, although, maybe he wasn't the one that took it out of the bag. Maybe something else took it out of the bag. Yeah, thinking. his serpent demon. Yep. Yep. Which uh, Will has has he sees later, and mm. Lyra thought she maybe saw the first time she saw him. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But that could be a possibility too. Mm-hmm. She's she's guilt ridden a little bit with not only is she frantic about the lithiometer, but talking to Will, she's guilt ridden because she feels bad that she never asked, she could have told him right away where his father was. Yep. And she mm-hmm. feels like she really let him down, and she feels guilty for that. Not just for losing, she's mad at herself for losing lithiometer, but she's guilty about not helping Will when she could have. For two reasons. I mean, one, because she's a good friend, and two, because the alethiometer told her right. that she was supposed to be uh, helping him. That was number one. But her curiosity got the best of her. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because she uses language that says, um, it told me what I should have done. Like, I, it told me it wanted me to do this, but I chose to do what I wanted to do. And it was that same kind of language like that sometimes fundamentalist Christians use when it's like what God's will was versus like, you know, like choosing what I wanted to do over what. And I don't mean that that's mm. the same connection for, like that the lithiometer has has that kind of role. But it just was that same sort of like she knew there was something that was that was bigger that was guiding her, and she totally ignored it. Mm-hmm. And that's what you know, kind of every day people do every day when they, quote unquote, sin, sin. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, he he does. You know, she she needs his help, and she he's he's not super happy about it about how it all went down, but he he I think he wants to help her. He just doesn't really know how. They need to get it back, but they don't really know how. Um, he they're both brave, uh, but she's a little bit upset at this moment. But he kind of 
steers them in the way of of going to investigate, I guess, at this point, and just confront Sir Charles? Well, I think, um, you know, leading up to that, to that decision, when he is letting her know that her plans, you know, are kind of silly. You know, he's been in this world. He knows how it works. He knows it's not a diehard movie. He's not going to, they're not going to just break in and steal this stuff. They have to, you know, just do it like normal people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So she, they, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. You go no, right You ahead. go, you go. I, w- I was just thinking, you know, she, she doesn't know what to do. She keeps telling Will she's sorry. Mm-hmm. And then Will's like, I don't care that you're sorry. He's like, don't, like, sorry doesn't mean anything to me. And then she remembers that she has the card, which is, how they sort of formulate or how she tries to like, we can go back and we can get it. And he, and this is why I think what you're saying, Travis, she keeps, he keeps saying like, how are we going to get in? He has a big house. He's going to have this. He's going to have that. Uh-huh. Um, but I just love it because she, she tells Will in this part that he's stupid and she wishes <laughs> like that Yorick Bernison was there and that he would like, I don't know, rip off Will's face or something. Like he would, it was just funny. Cause it was like a tantrum. Mm-hmm. Like it was just like it, like I wish he was here and he was gonna you know, before she pulls it together and they kind of decide without a word they go in and then they go and do what they need to do. But then Will kind of gives her a look that she says that Yorick would have given her too if she right. was like flipping out like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, there's some similarities here between uh-huh. the two of them. Yeah. Uh-huh. So the plan is to confront Lord Lord Charles. Just roll up on him ring the bell and you know maybe not ask for it back but say it's mine mm-hmm. um and and i sort of like that the, the wind this window into will's world is like nowhere near where sir charles lives so you just have to sort of like walk for an hour and a half to get uh-huh. there <laughs> not close like in skyrim <laughs> before you get fast travel <laughs> yes <laughs> uh so they they finally get to his place which is uh has a big fence around it. It's very elaborate. Um, and they go to visit him and he's sort of fine with seeing them. He lets them in. Uh, his servant lets him in and they come in and Lyra, as she's wont to do, kind of loses it on him a little bit. I just love his response where he's like, oh, it's basically a possession is nine tenths of the law is the <laughs> is, is his <laughs> argument. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, he's like, well, I have it now and nobody's going to believe you anyway. Um, but he also says by the time, you know, they figure out what to do or they come up with some other plan, he'll, he'll, he'll have paperwork that'll back up that it, that it's his, you know, it's like they, they're, they're not going to get it back from him legally or, or any other reason. So, you know, of course they're going to have to come up with a more, more significant plan. Just proving though, he's got like, so all kinds of nasty connections. If he can just mm-hmm. have these documents created. Right. Oh, like, Hey Joey, get this, re- make a receipt for me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Apologies to all the Joeys who listen. <laughs> uh, so the, this this conversation goes. You know, he he puts it inside of sort of a curio, uh, like a glass front cabinet, which he has four of them. And and Will's really interesting in this scene because he's really taking in every detail of the study. Um, I think he's already sort of formulating a plan. What mm-hmm. not really sure how to carry it out, but looking and 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 trying to get a lay of the land. Yeah, and he knows how to play that room. I mean, you know, there's Lyra freaking out. You stole him, Will's like, Lyra thinks she left something in your car. Like, yes. he he knew, you know, he knows how to to talk to Sir Charles in a way that doesn't agitate. You know, it's sort of that he, he he's placating, uh-huh. you know, and, and, he's, and he's good at that. Um, because at some point, and I just think it's interesting, like at some point, Sir Charles says to, says to Lyra, have you any control over yourself? Yeah, like, after she uh, spits like she's on like, him. yeah, go and yeah, after she spits on him, she's like, go and sit down, oh, you filthy brat. He calls uh-huh. her a filthy brat. That was hardcore. And and you know, and so like, and Will is doing what you said, Alec. He's just sitting back. He's memorizing like mm-hmm. the room. He's taking note, mental note. And Lyra is just yeah, you know, and maybe that was the distraction that Will needed, that, so that you know he wasn't talking to Will, and Will could kind of do it, but. Man, I was like, he called her a filthy brat. 
Yeah. It was like calling her a mudblood, you know? For real. Mm -hmm. It was bad. And, you know, and Will, right. Will has no significant connection to the alethiometer either. It's like to him, you know, he's a, he doesn't have an attachment to it. You know, he's, he's only there because of her. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he has no reason to freak out. And so his measured tone is kind of perfect for the, for the moment. But I love that he's sort of taking it all in. Well, and I think he also probably feels some kind of a kindred connection to that because of how he felt about the letters mm -hmm. and getting yeah. the letters and finding the letters. And so I'm sure some, maybe, maybe not sure, but, you know, it would seem to me like part of that would, would come into play for why he would, because he, he's always irritated with her, but he concedes. I think he mm -hmm. can see, um, you know, a little bit of himself in there in yeah. some of the things. And so he, he helped her. Well, you know, Sir Charles is 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 cocky in this scene, too, in a lot of ways. But in particular, you know, Will does give him an out where he's like, oh, she thinks she left something in your car. And at no point he was like, oh, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. He, you know, he's not he doesn't like ride this. Uh, he never plays the ignorance card for very long. He's like, nope. oh, you mean this? You know, you just you can see her just like, you know, pulling it right out. You know, it's like, oh, you mean this thing? And then he puts it in the thing. So he has he has very little fear about having to give it up. Those kids are no threat to him. None. Nope. But, you know, as you and I know. That yeah. They are. <laughs> yes. Little does he know. Little does he know. Um, so. They, you know, kick sand and head back to Chittagaze. And um, on a mission, a new mission, which uh, Sir Charles has given them, which is he wants another object that he can't get, obviously, because of the specters. Uh -huh. And he will trade them, the alethiometer, for this item, this object, a knife. Yes. And they accept this mission without really any knowledge about what, like, what this is going to entail. If it gets the lithiometer back, you, you got to do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. So they head to the Tower of Angels. Um, and they have Lyra remembers seeing a young man looking at them during the altercation when during the, the cat stoning scene. Mm -hmm. uh, so she I think she thinks someone's in there. Uh, but going in, we find that there are actually two people in there. Well, um, I yeah. No, 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 I'm sorry. I thought you were done. I nope. apologize. Go ahead. Um, but like before they even get there, before she leaves the world, um, she she was going to go in. Do you remember that she was going to, before she crossed over, after she was talking to the children, she was kind of going to go in. And Pam was like, it was the same as when they were approaching the shed that had Tony Macarios yeah. in it. Yeah. Lyra was afraid, but she was pushing to go in. And Pam was like freaking out and saying, don't go, like, don't go. And And then Lyra, having learned, good for her, was like, he's freaking out, I'm going to go. Yeah. So I think there's already this looming, there's already this looming um, kind of atmosphere about what this tower is to begin with, just it's from that. It's foreboding, yeah. Right. Um, but then they go in and it's just this dark, dank, creepy, you know, tower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're right, there are two people, but I, lo I love when they see the first person who is dancing with the knife i mean they thought he was dancing just doing yeah. dance moves and they're not really <laughs> sure why he's doing dance moves but there doesn't appear to be any music no music right. uh we do find out why he's doing that shortly but mm -hmm. yeah it's a very bizarre moment yeah uh, i felt like he was doing some kind of weird like waltz or like you didn't mean like some very like truncated like you know jaunty Thing. Like I was trying to imagine what he was doing that would have looked like dancing. Yeah, it's almost like he's holding a he's holding a knife, and, but it's like he's he's fencing with himself or something, like some right. sort of balletic fencing. Uh -huh. but it's not really any clear reason why he's doing it. So they they leave him because obviously you don't want to mess with somebody who's dancing with a knife. Uh, and they head up a little further. Do they get all the way to the roof? Mm. Is our 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 second individuals on the roof? I believe so. And they find a much older gentleman there who's been beaten and tied, not tied well, but he's been tied up and beaten. Uh, and they um, assist him. Hmm. Yeah, we, this is where we meet uh, Mr. Paradisi. Yes, Giacomo. 
and Giacomo. Yeah. Fino Anane. Oh my, I was going to, yeah, that was the first thing I thought of. Oh, yeah, same. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, yeah, I, I feel so bad for this guy. Yeah. Like, he's not just like having been hit and like tied up and sort of just restrained or detained. Like, mm-hmm. his teeth are all broken out. Like, it is, he hasn't been fed. You know, and even though he's loosely tied, he is, he's been left up there to die. Mm -hmm. Like no one's checking on him. No one's Mm -hmm. helping him. Um, So, you know, it kind of, you know who I was picturing in my mind, you know, like the old guy in the cave in Aladdin. Like that that comes out. He has like, like that's who I was picturing um, from the cartoon Aladdin, I did not see the live action. I refused to, but <laughs> it was just, I love that little, that character in there. Cause that's who I thought of like mm-hmm. what Giacomo must look like. I'm with that. Yeah. And so Giacomo we find is the bearer of something called the subtle knife. Um, ding, 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 the title of the book. Um, and he, it's been taken from him. This gentleman, this, this younger man has taken it and left him essentially for dead at this point. Um, And there is one chosen carrier of the subtle knife. So it really is something that will belong to someone. I thought that was interesting. I I did too, and I know we're not quite there yet, but it felt to me like the knife was almost like a wand in Harry Potter, that it chooses... That you know what I mean? Like the wand, it's like the, wi- the wizard wand chooses choose. its, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The wand chooses a wizard, and it felt like you know, there was uh, some of that going at some point with this knife. That mm-hmm. the way he was, the way Giacomo was talking about it, it was like it was kind of had a personality, almost like the alethiometer did. Like it seems to, yeah. These are these, these, um, these objects in this, in all these universes that seem to have, um, magical properties uh and and they have dust based devices yeah but this thing has been forged and it's it's so thin that it can cut between the universes and also cut through any objects cleanly yeah Yeah. just a little bit of pressure depending Mm -hmm. on the side like a bifocal yeah you know like oh you know one side cuts through any physical object and the other side will cut through to any universe. We can see why Sir Charles wants this. Mm-hmm. Yes. He, mm-hmm. He's aware of gaps and, and, and openings into other universes. I think he would love to have this knife where he can move around freely. Yeah. Collector like him. Mm-hmm. Just imagine what he could gather. So the but younger... Julio wants it for something different. Um, you know what I mean? Like Tulio, I don't know. Does Tulio want to go to other worlds or is he just using it as a way to protect himself against the specters? That's what I thought. The specters are afraid of it, mm-hmm. but it's not clear whether they can be injured by it. They just stay away from it. I, I assume they could, if it could cut. It can cut anything. Anything. You know, like mm-hmm. either side of the knife seems like there's a 50, 50 chance. One of the mm-hmm. sides is going to, or is that a hundred percent? The knife would probably cut them in some yeah, way. If you're slashing back and forth, at <laughs> some point somebody's getting tagged. Somebody, right. And so, you know, that's I, I'm just I'm curious because I feel like you don't know a lot about Tulio. You don't really ever get any real backstory. You don't understand his motivation. You just see him kind of dancing. He's kind of cackling crazy. Mm-hmm. And then he and then he's coming to the top of the roof. He's a little yeah. mad. He's a little mad. Um yeah. For sure. But Giacomo says that, so what he's doing, what he's, you know, his, this dance is that he is trying to use the knife to cut into other worlds, but it's not so easy. He has, he's not going to, he refuses to train him or mm-hmm. show him how to do it. Mm-hmm. So Tulio comes to the roof and uh, uh, fight, fight, fight. We get a fight, a real fight, a legit <laughs> yeah, we fight. Do. Yeah, we do. I like how we, my, 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 my favorite part of this fight, the beginning of this fight, is Will wrapping up his hand with the rope. Mm-hmm. He, he oh, knows yeah. this is going to go down, mm-hmm. and he's got to protect himself in some fashion. That's right. He doesn't have a weapon. Mm-hmm. This other guy's got this magical knife, so you mm-hmm. know you got to be careful. Although, Will maybe has a little bit of the upper hand because the other kid is is a little bit off. There's something wrong right. with him. Right. He's, he's a little bit 
out of his element. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a tremendous battle really between the two of them. Uh, will as expected, um, is, is maybe a little bit faster, smarter, um, more, more wise in the ways of, of fisticuffs perhaps in Mm -hmm. his upbringing. Uh, so he, he ultimately gets the knife. He he defeats Tulio and and gets gets a hold of the knife. But in the process, he loses two fingers. Right, the pinky and the ring finger. Yes. So now were they cut off by the knife, or were they somehow severed from the rope? I think they were cut off by the knife. Right. Well, my question is: Does Giacomo have all ten of his fingers? Is it is it something about the bearer that has? Yeah, the That's bearer the, has eight fingers. It's the mark mm-hmm. of the bearer that they both lose the the pinky and the ring finger. So he, he didn't lose it in the in the fight. No, he, I I thought he lost it in the fight, but it was one of those things that kind of just it, it it happens. Like you know, like it, it's it's mm-hmm. it, it's part of the process of getting the knife. It happens because to me, the three fingers is the is the pinching of the. When you what, so Giacomo teaches him about how to close the the windows into the other uh-huh. worlds, the pinching the three three fingers pinching it closed is very important for the bearer to have. I think you're right about that, but I think they, they he lost it in the fight, and I think that's what happens. It's almost like fate causes you to lose the those two fingers in in the lead up to getting the knife. And every it. bearer passes on right. the knife right. after either being incapable to carry it anymore Uh or in a fight, I guess. Uh Because then again, it's like a wand, Uh right? If you defeated, like it defeated the person who had it and it sort of shifted loyalty. Uh Uh I don't know that it ever had any kind of loyalty or felt any connection to Tulio, but even if it was still connected to Giacomo, it decided it's time there was done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of like the you know like the ring like I'm gonna roll down this way and try to get closer to my you know like it knew that Will was gonna take it to mm-hmm. the, like wherever it needed to go next. Right. Well, right. Tulio had all of his fingers. He did. He or, did. Well, he had not been so, chosen, and he wasn't right. able to cut. And and Giacomo was never gonna teach him. Right. Mm-hmm. And and there's so many elements to this about how to use it that does require some training. Even though Will has to get this training under significant duress, yeah. Um, I mean, how much blood does this kid lose in the next, you know, twelve pages? Yeah, I mean, um, he's being taught while blood is like popping out of his finger, pouring out of yeah. this, you know, this sheet that's been wrapped around his hand. Yeah. So he's. So Giacomo teaches him this. So right around while Giacomo says, I have to tell you, I have to tell you now quickly. There's not much time. Tulio bolts and runs out front. And this is where we see Tulio's siblings and Tulio gets taken by specters. It's a pretty heartbreaking scene, even considering considering we know what Tulio has been up to. It's still a pretty heartbreaking scene. And those two kids are pissed at Lyra. They look up at her and they shake tiny fists at her. I'm going to oh, kill you. Daggers, daggers. Like... Oh, legit, we're going to kill you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. not like uh, we don't like you. It's like, yeah, this yeah. is more than a schoolyard we're brawl. Get you. Right, mm-hmm. we'll find you. Uh, and she comes back and sees that that Will is sort of attempting to um, learn. But, the, you know, in the just before this, the uh, I like that um, Giacomo's like, oh, I have some healing salve. And it's basically like, it's like a tube in Neosporin. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciated I that. It. That was great. And she, Lyra's like, or, you know, Will's like, <laughs> can't, can't believe this is happening. It is very good for wounds. <laughs> yeah. So the trick that Tulio did not, was not taught, is that you can't just hack and slash and open up willy nilly these openings into other universes because you would, the knife would just you know, open everything, you know, just constantly open. You have to find tiny little imperfections and the, you have to put your, almost have to, I think they described it as putting your soul or your essence at the edge of the knife, oh, at the right. tip of the knife and feel around. And Lyra is very familiar with this and she really helps him get over the hump about sort of releasing that energy like the same way that she uses the lithiometer, another sort of parallel between the two objects. Yeah, I love that they say, I, I think this is how they phrase it, um, 
they can be anywhere, but not everywhere. Like the little, the little n notches. Yes. They mm -hmm. can be anywhere, but they're not everywhere. And so you have to kind of hone that. But I love what Lyra does there for, for Will, because she's very gentle mm -hmm. and like caring when she comes. She said, I know that you're trying to do this, but you're fighting the pain in your hand and you can't. Like you're distracted by this pain. And instead she says, let the pain, like it's almost like be one with the pain or let it come mm -hmm. through you so that you can move past it to do what you need to do. And yes, he's using too much of his energy thinking about the pain right. or trying to do two things at once, which right. is feel pain and also feel the edge of the knife. And right. he has to sort of combine those things. Yeah, I thought that was very prescient of her. It was, yeah. like, it was like mindfulness education almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really neat. Yeah. So he he learns. Um, he gets he does it pretty well, pretty early. Maybe he is a natural. I mean, I'm still sort of shuddering over the loss of his fingers, and and you know he, he as he's training, I think he looks over and looks at them again one more. I think he sees them twice. These poor little fingers laying on the ground, just sort of unceremoniously lost. Um, but the closing of the portals is another key element here that he's taught, which is this pinching of the edges to close the to close this opening into other universes. Uh -huh. I love I sort of love the concept of this and how it works. And it, it's kind of a it's a it's a beautiful instrument. Um, and he he does use it. He has kind of a natural. Even with his injury. Um, right. Yeah. And again, that's us. And that's again, this is where that parallel between Will and Lyra is 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 strong is that any again anybody else even if he was a chosen one that he was going to be fated for this knife there's something in will that allows him to be able to do that just like there was something in lyra that allowed her to be able to read the alethiometer without a book mm -hmm. you know like not having a book they were shocked that she could read it without a book and here he is i mean he literally had like 15 minutes of training mm -hmm. and he's like opening windows yeah mm -hmm. and then giacomo's like all right peace out yeah, <laughs> like literally, it's like they leave. It's, I'm gonna die now. Yeah, it's it's like they're done. He, yep. They they leave, mm -hmm. and they and they're you know off on their next adventure. It's kind of crazy, even with Will in the state that he's in. Um, how quickly do they? But before we get to that, I think there yeah. are two things we need to to talk about. Oh sure. Yeah. Um, there's the 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 what the knife looks like, what the knife is made of. Mm. It's yeah. made of the same material as the blade that was going to do the intercision yes. on Lyra back yes. in the last book. That's right, one of the one of the sides yeah. looks like mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. and the other one is different. Right, but the, but that means that on her world, they're able to to manufacture knives like this, or at least like in to some degree. In theory, yes. Yeah. Like big versions of it, like mm -hmm. a big blade. But and this so, would have to be thin enough and honed down to the thinnest possible edge that mm -hmm. maybe maybe they haven't figured out how to get that thin. Mm -hmm. Because the, the other, thinness oh, is so sorry. important. Sorry. And then the other thing I was thinking about was that um, that knife could be used to sl cut a person from their demon. I was mm -hmm. thinking that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I actually kept waiting for that to happen in the upcoming chapter. And then there's the bit. The other thing I want to talk about, though, was um, when Pan touched uh, Will. Pan yes. comforts Will. Yes, that's a huge yeah. yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, he and he didn't just, like, brush up against, against him. I mean, Pan, like, licked his hand and mm -hmm. really cared for him. Mm -hmm. he, he, surprised, he even surprised Lyra. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was fascinating to me. Uh -huh. That was fascinating to me that he made this choice. I mean, just the fact that he chose to be a dog, uh -huh. which is like, dogs are just like the best ever. Did you mean like he picked the exact form that would be like the most comforting, you know, thing for, for Will. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, the fact that he like was licking the wound and was, you know, nudging his head and letting him touch it. And it was, it was interesting because he then pets, he like, it's not, it's not just that Pan is touching, like kind of touching Will, but he, mm -hmm. Will is petting yes. and kind of touching. Yeah. But and it doesn't. Lyra, and Lyra's not freaking out. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It doesn't seem to affect her. 
-hmm. in the same way. And maybe it's because she's a little more. It's also what was needed. It was, it was like an essential mm -hmm. thing that was done. Pan made a choice and it was something that had to be done in that moment. Maybe there's a little bit of ever, a little bit of all that. She has yeah. some comfort level with him and she understands that it was the right thing to do. And Pan is also a piece of her and, and he made that decision on her behalf. Mm -hmm. And we learned in the last book that uh, Pan has the skill to read people well enough to know what they need in any particular moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's that the, the part when the children are, are escaping from a ball banger and um, he's like dodging them between children trying to, to figure out what they need to get them to move faster. Like mm -hmm. Pan has that, that skill that allows them to, to read people. Mm hmm. Yeah, and it's what it's what allows him to move on. Okay, after that happens, he says he wipes his tears away and he says, "All right, tell me what to do." Uh -huh. You know, like it's a it's a bomb. It's like it's exactly the bomb he needed, and mm -hmm. and it got him through to do it the next thing. It was better than the Neosporin. It was, I don't know how. <laughs> he just bled right through that. That did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so uh, how how long is the turnaround before they head back to Will's world at this point? They redress his wound again. Uh, Lyra's become quite a, a quite a, a, a skilled uh, um, field medic at this point. She's doing she's doing pretty good work here, and she's also very uh, very gentle and mm -hmm. careful uh, with Will in particular. And their relationship and their bond is definitely growing. I found that one of the moments they had bef as they were sort of packing to leave um, and Will asked her to hold the letters for her, for him. And uh, he said, you can read them if you want. And she goes, no, no, I'd, I'd never. He goes, no, no, you, you can read them. Um, there's that, that bond, another piece of that bond there. He, he trusts her and he wants her to read them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was moving. Yeah. yeah. After the connection, I guess with, with Pan, you know, those two really are a unit at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, not that it's, I mean, I know that there was, in, in, in the other book, in, in The Golden Compass, there was, when they touched her demon the last time, there was a metaphor, and a pretty ugly metaphor mm -hmm. for, what it, for what it meant. And it was forceful, and it was, you know what I mean, it was against her will. And this was given freely, and in that sense, it felt like there was a very, like it was an intimate like an intimate moment in the same kind of the same kind of way. Obviously it's not a sexual moment, mm -hmm. but it has the intimacy of that kind of a moment. And so like, I think that's part of also what puts them on that next level of, do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes so much sense. I mean, if your soul is outside and has the ability to physically touch someone else, I mean, it makes so much, so, so much sense that you would be able to, have there would be so many different different forms of intimacy you know mm -hmm. like your your soul would have the ability to touch someone in a different way mm -hmm. so they head back to will's world our world and uh, head over to sir charles again although this time they walk a little bit more of the distance inside chitagaze before they sort of cut through to where they need to be Mm -hmm. uh, but they go to see, they're going to Sir Charles and they're going to steal the alethiometer this time. Yes. Heist. So we get our in, interuniversal heist is taking place here. So if you wanted the Italian job, you got it. Yes. No, no mini coopers, but you know, we have, a, <laughs> we have a subtle knife instead. Sorry. So the plan would be that Will would cut through, cut a window into Chittagaze walk across the amount of you know steps that he feels like he needs to take cut another window into his world grab the alethiometer snatch and grab close the portal go back into Ch chitagaze and then be safe um seems kind of simple on paper uh and they get to sir charles's um home and it seems to be going pretty well to start right mm -hmm. except there's one significant problem Elithiometer ain't there, bro. It's Yikes. not there. It, it's of course it's not there. It would be too easy. Of course. Yeah. I, I love that part because it reminded me of like Tomorrowland. When you know when like she's do you see yes. Tomorrowland when they're like holding oh. the button? And so then and so like she's walking in 
Like the swamp. In the yes. swamp, but she's also with, and that's what it made me think of. Because he, I love that he just kept like cutting and looking, mm-hmm. and cutting and looking like he was like peeking. It was funny. And it was, it just made me laugh. I was like, what if you were there and some, you were just like whoop and peek through, and somebody was like there, <laughs> like right there. Yeah, you would ruin, like they would break. It was the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Servant sitting in there. Excuse me. <laughs> Question though, so yeah. Sidagaze is. The alternate version of Oxford. Essentially. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're, I guess we're, we're, we're guessing that not we're guessing they're now walking in what is the equivalent of his house in Sidagaze. Mm-hmm. It does not seem to be in a house in Chittagaza. It seems to be just in an open space, right? Right. So assuming, of course, there are multiple levels in this open space mm-hmm. like in order to get upstairs. Mm-hmm. I was, uh, this, this was, uh, it, it threw me. I mean, like, was, what he's like was, slicing through the universe into a wall in the other universe. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, if the, if the architecture doesn't match up, how are they able to do this one-to-one um, poke through and gaze? Especially, uh, especially when you get into different dimensions. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a good question. I mean, if you were, but does the window open in the exact same spot, or is it something that again, another reason why he has to cut so many times is he's trying to find the exact right level and height and direction that right. he needs to be facing. Um, the study's on the first floor or is on the second floor? It's the first floor, right? I thought it was the first floor. Yeah, but it would still be higher than the ground. Right. But if you cut through, you could be, you know, here at the floor, you know, and open up and you'd be there, I mm-hmm. guess, if it was that same, if it was one-to-one. Mm-hmm. It's not It's not super clear. I guess I sort of suspended disbelief on this one. Yeah. Yeah. I Because what, what got me, though, was the fact that we opened a portal in the Arctic that got to Sitagaze, which is now back in Oxford. Mm. So the, 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 the geography doesn't, didn't match up before. Mm-hmm. So I guess now we're expected to assume that the geog- geog- geography matches up. Mm-hmm. And uh, I could have used some more explanation there. Yes. Yeah, so if it was a certain world, they could open up and they'd be like in the sky. Right. Yeah. Right. Just okay. fall out. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, they, the, the, I think the Russos were talking, or even Feige was talking about, like, when they brought everyone back, um, when, when Hulk brought everybody back after the snap. Yes. And he said, oh, everybody's, you know, would people be like in airplanes or something? He said, no, no, no. You Don't forget, this is safe. Smart Hulk. Yep. He would say, I bring everyone back safely. Yes. Um, so, you know, maybe there's just a little element. Maybe the, maybe the, the knife is smart. Maybe it knows, it knows enough to sort of, you know, get in the right spots. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the ethiometer's not there. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but, you know, while he's he's trying to figure out whether he's looking in the wrong space, if he's at the wrong cabinet, because he did remember that there were four of them, while he's poking around, of course, Lyra's on watch detail, and I like that uh, Pan is a, an owl, you know, <laughs> at like, his, his maximum height, like, looking <laughs> around and hooting, which is great. Uh, but they're sort of... Uh, the, the sound of gravel, the car, they're back. He's yeah. back. Um, his servant and, and Sir Charles are, are arriving again. Good news, maybe he has the alethiometer. Bad news, Will's, you know, in their house, basically. Well, and worse news, he has Mrs. Coulter well, with him. Well, someone's right? with him. Yes, Mrs. Coulter. What? Uh, he went and got her. What? And And it turns out, Sir Charles is actually someone we do know. Uh, we finally placed him. And who yeah. is he? Uh, none other than Lord Boreal. Yeah. So when this came the up, know it all. I had my Kaiser Soze moment and I'm like, all right, this, I need to go back and see all the, the clues that told me that this was Lord Boreal. So I went back to the golden compass and control F to my way. Cause I'm reading the, the thing electronically through the first book on Lord Boreal. And Lyra didn't just see him before. Lyra had a whole darn conversation, conversation mm-hmm. with him. I'm I'm kind of sketchy on her not recognizing him. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a girl who's so sharp that she picks up on every little detail. I mean, remember her conversation with Yofer in the Arctic when she's putting all the pieces together like instantly and creating this lie. Mm-hmm. She didn't remember a guy that she's not only, she didn't just have a conversation with him. She told Lord Fa about him. Um, one of the, uh, one of the other Egyptians was bringing, bringing, brought him up in a conversation. Mm-hmm. He, he, he had a fairly large role in the golden compass he he did he, she she really only interacted with him once and it and he should have a conversation with him but yes if you had a conversation with you know if you were at starbucks and the mm-hmm. uh, one of the baristas saw your hat and was like oh i i love captain marvel um tell me you know uh, have they announced a second captain marvel yet and you were like oh i i actually they haven't but i know that you know we're expecting you to have a short conversation with them and maybe it's meaningful. Fast forward six months. You've been taken captive multiple times. You've been thrown around. Would would you remember that barista's face? Oh, I don't know. I'm, I mean, that's the I'm question. Old, I don't know. I'm, I'm an old man and my memory is suspect. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Lyra, who has made her entire character on being, you know, super sharp. Mm-hmm. I, I, I had a difficult, difficult time. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, so here, here's what I think uh-huh. about, uh, about that. I, I mean... I think it's fair that she, t- 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 for her to have not recognized him, given that she was in an entirely different world. Mm-hmm. Like there was no reason for her to believe that anybody else could have gotten into, I think, that world and be there that she knew. Um, I think Except that's... when she saw him, she saw him when she was standing next to that stuff for, that was like a, uh, a perfectly identical copy of the stuff mm-hmm. from her world, right down to the, to a knot in a string. Yeah. You know, I, I'm thinking if she turns around and she sees Lord Boreal, she's going to go, Oh my God. And you too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, Clark Kent could put on a pair of glasses and nobody knew who he was. Yeah, the people in Metropolis are notoriously stupid. <laughs> well, that's true. There aren't very many stupid people. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> in this, in these worlds, that's true. All true right. Enough. So, uh, so Lord Boreal and Mrs. Coulter are having many, um, have having quite a deep conversation. Most of the stuff we we are already somewhat aware of. Although Will does realize that they are invoking um, his father, mm-hmm. an explorer that disappeared a certain amount of time ago, 12 years ago. Uh, and he's kind of taken aback. Will's a little bit like, whoa, this is where you're like, is he going to lose his composure and is he going to get caught? Um, so he's, he's trying to, at, at this point, the, the alethiometer has, has come back out. Right. And, and Mrs. Coulter wants the alethiometer, but Lord Boreal has set it down and they're having a conversation. And Will sees it. He can almost reach it, but we now know that there are two additional things in the room that are sort of lurking. Uh-huh. It's there's two demons poking around, mm-hmm. our golden monkey and yeah. our snake <sighs> are poking around, and Will is it, there's a potential he he could get caught here. He needs Lyra's help, and he's going to pull a Hermione Granger and throw a rock. She's going to throw a rock and distract. I just watched Azkaban. Um, <laughs> throw a rock and distract the demons. She does break the window, though. So maybe she threw it a little bit too hard. Uh, but it it allows Will to grab the lithiometer enough time to go out. This is like one of those could be so cinematic and so like, you know, like edge of your seat. Are they going to are they going to be able to do this? Uh, so he grabs it. And then, and he's able to sort of close the window and return to Chittagaze, but someone isn't in Ch- Chittagaze. Lyra's Lyra. missing. <sighs> this is a tough. This is a tough heist. Yeah. So Will goes back and and looks. He's sort of again, it's sort of hilarious. Like you see his face just kind of like mm-hmm. poking through a hole, looking around <laughs> and looking in some bushes and whatnot. The golden monkey is is. Uh, frantically running outside the house looking for them and um, Lyra is protected or rescued by a cat our friend Will's cat Uh 
right. has come to the rescue and, and serves some significant HP damage to the golden monkey. Finally. Yeah, yeah. for Finally. sure. Deserved. Yes. yes. Richly oh, yeah. deserved. That monkey has had it coming. Mm-hmm. Raked its claws right across its face. Oh, right. It, it's already nasty face. Yeah. And just enough time for Lyra to jump back through mm-hmm. and they can pinch our little window closed. You know, part of me was <laughs> thought that the wa- the window was going to get closed on the monkey's face. So did I, or his hands. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Something. Yes. Something. Yeah. yeah. I was waiting for it to put, like, in Ragnarok when, like, yep. <laughs> the head was, like, rude, like, low. Like, I was waiting for the monkey's hand. <laughs> A Which, what would that do? I don't know. Like, if you do to mean, like, would, that wouldn't kill a demon. I wonder right. what that would do. I, not to t- take the conversation, can, but like. Can you close it completely on something? At I don't all? Know. Can you close it? Can you maim a demon? These are uh, my questions. These questions and more on tonight's episode of. <laughs> the Gold, that's, a, this, that's a, the a really interesting. Class. That's an interesting question because we know that a demon can be killed. Right. And injured. Right. Or injured, but could could you sever a piece of a demon? Like, could the golden monkey's tail get chopped off? You know, yeah, that's a good a good question. Is mm-hmm. that possible? We may find out. We may. We may. Uh, any other hot takes? I just I just want to close a little thing for myself, which is that I I don't think we ever talked about the fact that in the golden compass when. Lord Azrael is like kind of berating Marissa when they're up there on the on the Arctic, mm-hmm. and he basically throws all of her lovers in her face, including Lord Boreal. I know all about Lord Ew. Boreal. Yeah. He's like, and I don't care. So then, when they get together in this spot, like it's just, I don't know, it was just super icky. Yeah. But he he is just he calls her repellent mm-hmm. to like Mrs. Yeah. Coulter's face. I just kind of love that he doesn't he. He doesn't play any games. Like he doesn't cut any punches. He does not care who she is. He's like, she's terrible. Yeah. She's, yeah. she's like, uh, that's my daughter. He's like, I don't care. <laughs> she's an awful person. Yeah. And I guess maybe if you've, you know, been like that, then that's a fair game. I don't know. I, I feel like it's not though. I feel like it's still crossing some lines. Oh, sure. For for good decent people, yeah. Yeah. Uh, good, yeah, that's true. And these, these uh, are of which these two are not. Yeah. Um, yeah. Neither. No. <laughs> Neither of them. No. So yeah. So, yeah, so that was good. Yeah, that was I, good. Uh, like it was that. really good. Yeah, I was uh I was delighted by these chapters. This was this was easy reading, man. You can uh mm-hmm. this was cliffhanger after cliffhanger after cliffhanger. It's funny because we left you know, our our, our the cha- end of chapter six, it's it's so fantasy and so huge. Yes. With the uh, the fortress being built and angels and you know uh, Ruda and the you know all that stuff is so massive and you're and you feel like the 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 story is just exploding and then these are exciting but they're they're pretty intimate chapters mm-hmm. we go small here even though the ideas of the subtle knife and what it can do are large these are these are these are compact and and fast moving compelling chapters yeah without yeah. that bigness mm-hmm. yeah and again uh, back to uh... Pullman's writing. I mean, each of these chapters has a beginning, middle, and end. Yep. We get uh, a full story in each chapter um, that just makes you want to turn into the next one. So, um, yeah, it's uh, just more proof of uh, the amazing writer he is. I mean, come on, the last cha- the last, uh, the last uh, paragraph here. She helped him up, and they walked slowly through the garden toward the great white gleaming house under the moon. Mm-hmm. That's that's just poetry. Yep. yep. So great, and it's a, it's a throwaway it's a throwaway sentence. Yeah, but it's great, and it just it just makes you want to read the next chapter. And I stopped. I'm glad you did. I honestly, I would not be able to remember where the chapters end end and begin. While we were talking, I would know I would screw up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. See, that's the cool part about the audiobook. At the end, at the, at the beginning of each chapter, there's a musical interlude. Ah, uh, yeah. Remember the records used to play and there was a chime. That's right. I, I had the Hobbit when I was a kid, and that was a real specific one that oh, I would I, turn with a record was playing. I had the Black Hole. Mm. And um, firstly, fantastic. It's on YouTube, and maybe I'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> it's so fa- it's so fabulous. Mm-hmm. But uh, but every time you turn the page, you'd hear bling, bling, before Roddy McDowell is a robot again. 
Wow. Amazing. Yep. Well, we're, we're, uh, we'll be heading deeper into this book. We have uh, two more episodes of the podcast to get through this. It's, it's, it's going so fast. It um, really this three-chapter thing is a big difference from a two-chapter. Big mm-hmm. difference. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a requirement because of being able to finish this right around when the series comes out. But uh, it's, it's, uh, we're biting off some significant chunks of this book fast. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm finding it hard. Yeah. This, is, this is way harder for me um, to be able to process quickly, like mm-hmm. when, we, when we're doing this. Like I, I, I find myself having to think a lot longer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm super excited for the next set of chapters because I didn't read it, but I peeked and the first word is Lee Scoresby. <gasps> yes. So I'm so excited. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We, then we know 10, 11, 12 is going to be thumbs up. Yeehaw. Across the board. Yeah. Uh, well, we hope you'll join us. We're at the amberspodcast.com. We're on Facebook and Instagram. We've been sharing quite a few things. Thank you for those who are liking uh, all of those posts. Uh, and here we go. Buckle up, guys. November 4th is right around the corner. It's so close. A new teaser came out, uh, mm-hmm. which played before Watchmen last night. And uh, a little bit of extra footage. Yeah, but uh, it's uh, it's I'm pretty I'm getting pretty jazzed and good reviews also, by the way, from the uh, the premieres. Very good reviews. Glowing yeah. reviews, in fact. Yeah. Watchmen was super good, too, by the way. Watchmen was amazing. Uh, it kind of blew me away. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know what I expected. But it wasn't uh, that. It wasn't that. Mm-mm. And, and and it's true to the graphic novel in a way that I wouldn't have expected. Mm mm but it's very now and it's current also mm-hmm. somehow mm-hmm. The, the, you know, the, the book is a very much a product of the eighties. It is. Right. It is. Uh, right. You know, other, there's a lot of brilliant things in it and there's a lot of things that are very heavy, but maybe the lightest thing and the most fun thing in it was that Robert Redford is president. <laughs> yeah. So you got to think of, uh, like you said, it's a product of the eighties and, and I think it's a fantastic. Um, it, it's, it's a book written by a boomer. About that period, you know, Richard Nixon is the big bad, the whole thing. And this is a, a Gen X version of uh, Watchmen. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Lindelof is is our age. Mm-hmm. And uh, what he's what he's putting together here, I think, is uh, our generation's version of this. I'm pretty excited about it. Me too. And Regina cool. King was outstanding. Oh, she's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. High marks. And, I and, so, and Don Johnson, too. Oh, yes. I didn't see that. Don Johnson delivering the goods. Yes, he did. Louis Gossett Jr. delivering <sighs> the goods. They're all in it. Yeah, yeah. I, got a, I, I got I an enemy, watch, bi- I an enemy mind. I have like an enemy mind flashback. Oh my gosh, so that is one gosh. of my favorite movies of Absolutely. all time. Absolutely, of all time. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Oh man. And, and and Dennis Quaid was in the news too. Speaking of um... enemy mine. Okay, yes, no, we're not, let's not let's not go there. Let's not go there. <laughs> we're gonna go into a whole different podcast. We are going down this a deep is, hole here. This is our TMZ show. <laughs> All, All right, right guys. guys. We appreciate you listening. See you next week. Bye bye. Have a good night. Mm-hmm.